everybody, welcome to the second episode of Making, Making Sense. Sense. Well, today we will be talking about... Well, the, today we're going to be discussing um, the Navy's procurement of three submarines. Three? Three. 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 Because um, the process of um, procuring the first one has already been, you know, it's a done deal. But um, the, the second and the third ones, uh, that's the the point of the controversy that has been generated um, this week. So because last week the national budget was passed, first round. Well, um, the national budget has, has passed this at the first reading, mm -hmm. right? So it is now at the stage where, you know, um, the, the stage we call um, the scrutiny stage. Mm -hmm. That is when all the lawmakers, the MPs Opposition, come together. Uh, yes. They, they, they've come together um, and they sit in different um, house, speak, um, you know, house committees uh, to look at the, um, the, the, the allocations given to um, the various agencies. Right? And this week it was the Navy's turn to explain its portion of the budget allocated for you know, purchasing um, submarine. submarines and equipment. Well, it is uh, a weapon, you know, armaments. There's a certain armaments, but um, the the point of the uh, the controversy that, that that we see now is, um, you know, when a lot of people, are, you know, are debating, especially those who are critics of this government, um, they they appear to be, you know, on 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 um, a very critical note about this, and they think that procuring or, you know, paying money. Um, to you know, to buy the, the the submarines is now uh, not worth um, you know the investment, especially during COVID nineteen pandemic. Yes. Because you know they they think you know very strongly that um, the priority should go to the the post um, or the the pandemic uh, you know uh, alleviation schemes schemes and, and 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 the money should be spent there. What about you? What do you think? Well. Um, my opinion of this is, you know, um, we, we should look at the, um, you know, issue very, very uh, carefully because this is where, um, you know, if you don't think about it, you know, in the, in, in the deeper sense, you might get carried away by, you know, um, a certain, um, you know, sentiment uh, that has been brewing up. But um, the thing about this, um, you know, procuring submarines is, um, are we really um, on the side of the debate? Where you know the the lawmakers, some of the lawmakers think that um, we should postpone it. We should cut um, you know the the budget allocation, or should we proceed? Right. So on the other side of the of the argument, we've got people, um, especially in the navy, certainly, um, who who think and um, who believe that uh, we should be pursuing this um, because uh, don't forget that the two the second and the, and and the third submarines you're going to need 200 and you know and twen um, 22,500 you know million baht or two, 22.5 billion baht to procure these two submarines. What's the rationale of the navy though? Well um, as can be expected, it is um, for security. national security, maritime national security, and um, and you know one of the key arguments supporting this is, you know, we've got um, countries surrounding us with, um, you know, all these uh, which have um, already bought, um, you know, the the submarines, you know, um, um, what well, Vietnam has six. Right, Indonesia already has five, and they they're going to procure four more. Singapore, a very small, um, you know, um, um, country, four they've got. How many do we have currently? Um, we have already um, sealed the deal uh, on the first submarine. Right, we sealed the deal back in 2017. Right, and now the two. Um, um, submarines, the other submarines we're talking about. Um, we see the deal, and we're going to. We're supposed to be start paying, the, you know, over the seven years. We should we should be, um, you know, start. You should start, uh, you know, paying, and um, this year. But um, they have um, reverted that portion of the budget for the COVID relief, um, um, you know, budget. 
so they've put it back in the you know for the government for use um, in alleviating the the effects of the COVID nineteen. So the critics seem to think that the procurement of you know, submarines during this time is nonsense. I mean. Well, well, I think um, um, there, there is certainly because, an issue. Because some people say that the government is broke. It's, um, no, I don't think the government is broke, but it's certainly very borrowed. It has borrowed uh, you know, heavily, very heavily, um, certainly. But is it justifiable? It is, is, it, is it an action that uh, can be justified? What, what right. do you think? Well, um, we've got COVID. We've got, this isn't, uh, we're talking about a disease, a pandemic that has never happened um, before on such scale of you nobody know, destruction. Nobody knew it was going to happen. Nobody knew, nobody could have anticipated the extent of the damage and the destruction it could have caused globally. And Thailand is part of that global village. So um, we, we have had, you know, a fair share of, um, of destruction. So as you can see, and everything needs money to rebuild. So that, that money um, has been calculated and we can just spend like a trillion baht. So back to the justification of the procurement of submarines. You said you were talking about the national security aspect and how our neighbors own many submarines. Does that justify? Mm -hmm. Well, um, you know, going, uh, this word, um, arms race. Right. So um, if you if you've got a neighbor who has submarines, two or three submarines, and on the on the right side, you also have another, you know, a you neighbor such a with realist. five submarines. Right. How 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 are you going to be able to to say quite this is from the, the point of view of oh, the okay. of the Navy. Yes. Right. I'm not going to talk about what I think for, yeah. for a moment, but this is the argument along the line that, you know, of the, of the Navy. And the, and the Navy has, has certainly made this very clear. And um, they said we need it to protect our maritime, you know, security. Integrity. Yes, and, um, you know, I think it was certainly unprecedented to, to have witnessed um, uh, the, the army setting up the whole, you know, news conference the other, you know, this week to defend, you know, um, 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 yeah, this, this, this budget. It's a bit, well, I have never seen, well, I've rarely seen. I think it's um, a strategy the of the government this. that is trying to be more open in, you know, it is certainly, it is certainly um, one to be, to be more open, yes. certainly. But it's also um, a time, a perfect timing for, um, to defend, you know, um, the, the government's action because the government has been under pressure politically um, from all sides. And as, as, as we can, you know, see. And, and so this is, you know, the, the time where they could just, uh, you know, let out some of that uh, pressure that's been piling up on the government. So this is uh, both justification, you know, is sort of justifiable as well as being, you know, tactical. To me, I think it is quite tactical um, for the government to be, you know, explaining this. For, for, for the Navy to be explaining this. If the Navy has been, you know, explain it, it well, it's going to, you know, you know, look, you know, quite, um, you know, good on, on, on the government. So the opponents can, uh, can understand the rationale behind their action. Yes, um, but I think um, um, some of the critics have, have pointed out, and I think this is very interesting, they said the Navy could be a false target. Because when, when, when they mentioned this, I, I was... I was quite curious, what false target were they talking about? Well, um, the target was that, the real target, according to these critics, is, um, is the government um, putting, you know, a lot, letting the Navy take all the pressure over these two subs, when actually the, very, the real question that we should be asking is, since budget is scarce and important at this particular point in time, should we be asking the question whether the government is being effective with the, of the government with the government with the budget for alleviating the impact of COVID nineteen? Are we really deal what are we really dealing with here? The 
procurement of the submarines or the effectiveness of the budget, budget that has allocation. been put into re, you know, the, the aid money for relieving you know, COVID-19 um, uh, you know, pandemic. Are we really questioning this portion of the budget, which is far bigger than the 22.5 billion baht procurement we're talking about? If the government is being very you know, budget uh, effective, effective with you know, spending that budget, that amount of budget, we might not have to be you know, um, you, you know, focusing so much on this uh, submarine. Oh, so so um, it's kind of divert the question from the real question. Is that the case? Uh, is that That's the question to you. What do you think? About what? About this. Is this, um, I disagree is this maybe with the a false target? I, first, I disagree with the purchasing, procurement of the submarine. Because I'm a liberal in terms of international relations. I'm not a realist such as you. And I don't agree with armrest. And yes, just because our neighbors purchased many submarines doesn't mean that we have to purchase a submarine. Why would we have diplomacy if we have to purchase submarine to protect our you know, maritime uh, integrity? So I think international community is still a good platform to use to protect interests of each country. And yes, it's true that China is uh, expanding its influence around South China's but yes, they, I mean, China is expanding its influence over South China Sea. And during past months, uh, many countries, many neighbors, our neighbors, they are trying to point out that China is being aggressive. And therefore, that justifies the armrest that has been going on. But for me, during this time, yeah, but yeah, I, I, can, see, I can see the Navy is rational. I mean, like, it's normal for them, it's usual for them to come up, propose a budget. But it's just that this is during, this, is, this has been a very unprecedented time. So yes. everything is going to be scrutinized yes. in different lens. Yes. What was your question again? I'm sorry. <laughs> you were asking me about all oh, the false target, Tim. Yes. No, I think, I think personally, uh, talking with many government officials, I think they are trying to be more open because I think it's their strategy to show their integrity, that they are willing to listen to the people. So the conference is a good way to show that, oh, we listen to you. Mm. So it's their strategy to be more open mm. and therefore uh, we'll, they will gain less pressure from the people. I think um, it's, it's, it certainly um, um, has struck uh, you know, quite a lot of people as this question about uh, the false target has struck a lot of people and, um, you know, and uh, got them to be interested in the real issue, possibly the real issue here, because we've been trying to you know, sway people from left to right, because um, you know, the Navy itself has is, is called this um, a politici you know, alleged politicization of the procurement of the submarine and um, there, there is even a word which I find very very uh, quite harsh um, to be hearing from the, from from the Navy they, they've, they've kept themselves you know um, you know quite um, secluded um, they haven't talked very much they haven't held you know, public very army, much right, right? but the word <laughs> the, word, the word they use is, um, you know, the, the issue has been politicized in the most selfish way, right? So um, well, that goes to, um, I think, directed, it was being directed to politicians who have, um, you know, have been criticizing the, the, the procurement or deal, right? And um, there's certainly quite a substance, I think, to um, this false target scenario right they, they could be because um, once we, we're focusing too much on something particularly this deal we actually um, you know swaying from taking our you know attention away from the, the real um, the, deal the real issue that might be lurking behind we're talking about a trillion baht being spent right and that comes from everybody else you know the taxpayers pocket so should we divert our attention to that instead not just well, certainly, uh, in fact, I think it's, it's the duty of every citizen. Will you right? become the target of the government? 
<laughs> by pointing that people should no. screen I think, I, think, I think this is a constructive debate. So um, I think uh, the government um, is open-minded enough to be listening and to, um, you know, taking stock of what people are saying. And that certainly is what, you know, real democracy is all about. I haven't it? heard your views yet. The procurement <laughs> of submarines. We will certainly keep that post. We will keep you posted. Okay, but I said I disagree. <laughs> Well, you can kill me sure. if you want. So, sure. <laughs> so that leads us to another question, another issue. Mm -hmm. The media integrity. The media has also been scrutinized mm -hmm. these days. You know, uh, back, back on the 16th of August, where the protests said, oh, mainstream media, they, they don't do their job mm -hmm. covering the event. Now, uh, another media outlet has been pressured so hard from the public mm -hmm. saying that that particular outlet mm -hmm. is very biased mm -hmm. and pro-government and stuff mm -hmm. and also about the Navy mm -hmm. the Navy used a poll and in information from that outlet to justify mm -hmm. the purchase mm -hmm. what do you think I mean in this political climate in this boiling atmosphere mm -hmm. you think where do you think the media should stand well, um, first of all, I usually don't, um, you know, um, answer a question with a question, but um, I'm going to do that today. And that by asking is, do you believe that there is really, um, you know, an impartial media in this, you know, day and age? Well, personally, I think each one of us has our own biases, right? But we try so hard to hold up to our journalistic standard, but sometimes we can get swayed by our emotions and ideologies. But I for one, I think I have integrity. I never include bias, yes, never, yes, in, yes. in my news report. We, that is our duty. Yeah. We are duty bound to do that. And I think um, what we have done is we have reflected, we have shown that we have you know, integrity. But uh, certainly, to, you know, in answer that to, to your question, um, when, we, when we're talking about um, the media's role, right, in today's, you know, um, you know, events, w w what's going on around us, and certainly the, the political issues that, you know, uh, seem to split people, seem to be so divisive, right, it's driving down this, um, in with a knife that is causing so much division. I think the, um, the, the government, what we see happening with that particular outlet of, um, you know, um, the news um, agency, um, the, the, the pressure is certainly coming not directly to that particular uh, outlet, um, but it was a, you know, more or less a direct, in, in, indirect way. That pressure coming from the sponsor being, having been withdrawn, right? Some of the sponsors having been withdrawn. So um, as a result of the social media um, opinion, right, um, on the one side, very heavily on the one side. Um, that certainly has come to be quite an issue that, you know, a lot of people are paying attention because even with the media of today, you know, the um, business, the media businesses, you know, we do rely on income, we do rely on, um, yes, you know, readership certainly, we, 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 we need to care about the audience, right? The question is, do we, do we, the question is, do we have to be so much under pressure and that pressure is really you know making an impact on decisions yeah. of, the, of the news that, that 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 you know so I think it, it comes to uh, where the line is drawn commercialization mm -hmm. and you know journalistic standards mm -hmm. we have come under pressure but, but what, well, what I believe is if we stay true to being a good, you know, you have a standard to uphold and we do uphold that standard and it is seen in what we report. Once again, that's why we came up with this show. <laughs> we are trying to holding white or egg. We have opposing views, but we don't have to. We don't have to be at each other's throat, right? Right. We we, we can we can you know live you know together. Mm. There is harmony. There, there is harmony there, but you need People to go. People call you idealistic. I'm not idealistic. Optimistic. I, I do believe in moderation. Mm. 
a middle okay. path. I do, I do. Because at the end of the day, mm. you need to balance between being pessimistic and optimistic. Right. If you are pessimistic all the time, you, you know, the news you put out will reflect that. And if you're mm. too optimistic, you become um, the victim of, of, you know, a partial, mm. or impartial, not partial, impartial um, journalism. For me, journalists in a democratic society should be an observer. I mean, should be a lens where people look through. You cannot fuse your own beliefs or bias into that lens. You just have to, you know, report what is happening mm -hmm. truthfully, objectively, and let the people decide. I mean, that's, I think that's the essence of journalism. Oh, I think um, it, is, it is true, but um, the question is, is it, the question is, is it, uh, you know, easy to do? No, it's certainly not easy. It's no, it's no piece of cake doing that. But, um, but you need, that is the goal that you need to set and you need to fulfill. Right? So um, um, I think um, even today, what, we, what is going on in, in the world of, 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 of the mass media, you see that you know, a lot of you know, people certainly are the followers and the readers and the audience, they all have different um, you know, um, expectations. Right. What do you want to hear? What do you want to read? Of course, of course, we are but, humans. We right, but what's the remedy? I mean, like, it's not like back then when the media was still gatekeepers. How can, how can, how can people come to trust us again? Because well, trust in media has been in the decline for five years now. Well, we're talking about principle, aren't we? If we're talking about principle of being impartial, the, of, of not being self-interested, uh, and not, you know, being, you know, being bribed, you know, taking money, and we stay true to what we're doing, upholding the journalistic principle, um, it is going to show in what you report. I mean, this is, uh, I think I can't stress enough about this, but um, um, that is what will carry you through tough times, the toughest of times. And, um, you know, um, because there will be people wanting to consume that impartial product that you put out, right? And um, of course, of course, of course, being human, as I mentioned, being human, you, you, you want to hear what you want to hear. You want to read what you want to read. You want to watch what that you want to watch. That seems to be the gold standard of today. Uh, news that have emotions. News that have, you know, sighed a little bit. No, 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 no. There is a, this word, which I only heard the other day. They said the new that connects. But <laughs> <laughs> the mood connects you. Oh. Yes, it does connect oh, you. Yes. But it is it, it is, uh, it is a very it is a very cashy way of explain of 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 explaining how you want to hear what you want to hear. It connects with you because it fulfills that expectation that you have with, the, you know, with with his, what has been reported. So if you are not open-minded enough, then. The, 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 the growing, the expansion of the, the you know, partial uh, media outlets could expand. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, I think we, we have seen a lot of that going on around right, us, right. you know, in our mobile phones, in, yeah. in, right? In mobile phones. In mobile phones, and, and certainly, I mean, the Twitter, in, 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 in the social media platforms, you know, you get a lot of um, people only feeding you with the information that they think you want to hear, or you want to read, or you want to consume. Bias information, mostly. So please, people, come back to traditional media. <laughs> <laughs> Mainstream media, because we, what we do is we, we screen the information. We not we may be boring. We verify, not screen, sorry. We verify yeah. right, information for you. That's pretty much sum up this episode of Making sense. Do it again. Making, Making sense. sense. And once again, you can leave the comment down there and we will read it. And you can tell us what you want to hear next. And maybe we will include it in our next yes, episode. Yes, we're certainly going to be inviting some, you know, in, in, some influential you know, figures. Influential, interesting figures. Controversial you know. figures. Certainly, I don't know. certainly. Yeah. Please stay tuned next week. Press <laughs> like and share because we want attention to make our show going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just kidding. But yeah, just 
Thank you for supporting us. Thank you. And we'll see you next week.